The book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 9, is where we resume today's study, going through the book of Philippians, as always, verse by verse. Speaking of that, you can study all of God's Word with me anytime that you want to, as much as you want to, using my audio Bible messages, just like today, at the Scripture Verse by Verse website, and that is found at thebibleversebyverse.com. Go there, choose from four complete series, going through the whole Bible, verse by verse. Choose the series, then the book of the Bible, then the chapter, the section, click and listen. And you are all set. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth, in Jesus' name, amen. Chapter 2, verse 9. Well, let's go back to verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, Jesus, the Son of God, has always been the Son of God, the eternal Son of the eternal Father, 100% God, who also became 100% man. And God is telling Christians to have this attitude in us that was in Jesus. And what was that? Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation <clears throat> and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Jesus outranks everyone. He has a name above every name. He outranks everyone and everything, which is why someday Jesus will tell the devil to go to hell, and he will go. <clears throat> Faster than he can blink his demonic eye, he'll be in hell. Because Jesus is the name above all names, and what he says goes. You say you don't like Jesus? You say you believe in Buddha? You say you worship Hari Krishna? You say you worship Allah? You say you worship one of the million Hindu gods, and you're so smug about it? Jesus will one day tell all these false deities to go to the lake of fire. And they will. And so will you. If you put them above Christ, if you worship them instead of the one true God and the name that is above every name, Jesus Christ. Jesus outranks everyone and everything. One day Jesus will tell Christians to come out of their graves and they will come out of their graves. One day Jesus will tell the unsaved, all those who worshipped Buddha, all those who worshipped Hare Krishna, all those who worshipped Allah, all those who were atheists, all those who didn't have time for God, all those people he will command to come out of the grave as well. Then he will command them to go to hell, which is where they will be forever. And Christians will be commanded to come out of their graves. They will be given a brand new resurrected body because he has complete authority to do anything, to change anything as he see fit, sees fit, and he will. You know, one thing I like about Jesus is that he is a God of integrity. He always does what is right. 10. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Why? Because he is the name that is above all name. He outranks everyone and everything. Those who reject Jesus Christ as Lord in this life will be raised 
from the dead, as I said, will be thrown into hell in the next life. But not before they bowed their knees before the Lord Jesus Christ and confess that he indeed is Lord, that he is God, and worthy of worship, then they will be thrown into hell. But they will give Jesus, their creator, the worship that he deserves, the respect, the honor that, they deserve, that he deserves. Everybody's going to do that. Everybody is going to bow their knee before Jesus and confess that he is Savior and God and Lord. God will get the honor that he is due. Jesus will get the honor that he deserves from the world and everything in it that he created. Man, angels, demons, devils, saved and unsaved. Verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but much, now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Each one of us is responsible for our own soul. And anyone who knows the truth but turns their back on Christ will have no one to blame but themselves for their damnation. There are those who call themselves Christians because maybe they prayed the so-called sinner's prayer. So they think they're a Christian. But when you look at their life, they don't care about Jesus. They live the way they always lived. Oh, they might go to some lukewarm church with a good rock band and a pastor who runs around on the stage acting like a buffoon, getting the applause of other lukewarm Christians. Oh, they might do that. You realize that means absolutely nothing, don't you? You realize people like that are hell bound. They're unsaved. They don't care about Jesus. If they don't care about, if you don't care about Jesus, I don't care how many times you prayed the sinner's prayer, you are lost and hell bound. And the serious thing about this is that they become complacent in their lukewarmness, complacent in their false form of Christianity. And they slip further and further away from the truth and the real Jesus until Jesus, the real Jesus, isn't even an issue with them anymore. They sin, they don't confess, they don't repent. They're told they don't have to. So they don't work out their own salvation as the Bible says we are supposed to. You don't work for salvation. Your salvation is given to you a gift as a gift when you sincerely repent and receive Christ as Lord and Savior. But you work out your salvation. There are, there are side effects of truly being saved. And if you don't work out your salvation, it's because there's no salvation inside of you to work out. Hmm. 13, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. <laughs> if you don't have respect for the word of God, I'm not talking about the message. I'm not talking about the NIV. I'm not talking about the ESV. I'm not talking about the New Living Translation or whatever translation has been created lately. Over a hundred of them have been created in recent decades. English translations. I'll say something completely different. Satan is the author of confusion. <laughs> no wonder there's so much lukewarmness and confusion about what's true in modern evangelicalism. And my people love it so, God says. Yeah, they sure do. You know, inside every single Christian, there is a desire to do what is right. 
and a bad feeling when it is not done. They are grieved when they hear Jesus' name taken in vain. They are grieved when they do something that is contrary to Scripture. They have a desire to do what is right, even though they don't always do it. They have a desire to do what is right. That desire is there because God put it there. Philippians 2.13 God put that desire inside of every single saved person. God puts the desire there. But the Christian must choose to do it, and when he chooses to do it, God will give him the power to do it. But if the desire is not there, then God has not put it there, and if he's not put it there, you're not saved because he puts it in the soul of every person who he saves. Do you see that? I ran into a Christian that I hadn't seen in probably, I don't know, 30 years, a couple of years ago. He recognized me. I didn't even recognize him. He had always been kind of into the Christian rock, even back when I first knew him and stuff like that. And uh, found out, of course, he's going to some modern evangelical church. And we used to talk once in a while, you know, back in the day. And he's just so typical of modern evangelicals today. We were talking some about the Bible and some about God. And I, and I mentioned to him, I said, yeah, you know, when a lot of times when I do something wrong, I'm busy during the day and it doesn't really hit me that hard, but at about two in the morning, three in the morning, it's as if God hits me along the si side of the head with a two by four and wakes me up. Boy, you did something wrong. You know what his response was? Well, I'm glad that my God doesn't do that. And I thought to myself, yeah, Mr. Modern Evangelical, your God, whoever he is or whatever he is, certainly not the real Jesus, certainly not the God of the Bible. Your God, whoever he is, whatever he is, would not do that, would he? Because he tolerates sin. Giggle, giggle, snicker, snicker, when hell is talked about. Yeah, your God wouldn't wake you up. You have no desire for holiness. You have no conviction that it is something that absolutely is demanded by God. Well, Philippians 2.13, for it is God who works in us both to will and to do his good pleasure, to do the word of God. And that desire is inside of every single solitary Christian who is genuinely saved. And it's there because God puts it there. And if it's not there, you're not saved. And if you can scoff at sin, if you can chuckle it off, if you can chuckle the word of God off when it talks about hell and repentance, if you can just snicker, snicker, giggle, giggle, which is so often the case in modern evangelicalism when somebody actually has the nerve to speak the truth, then you're not saved. And you need to know it before it's too late for you to get saved. Snicker, snicker, giggle, giggle. Doing it right now, aren't you? I'll never hear, I'll never see you again, as if I could see you. You'll never hear me again, because you won't go near that Marat fella. He's so old fashioned. He's a throwback. Thank you. I'll wear that as a badge of honor coming from you. Study all of God's Word with me. We can hear a whole lot more like this. Because in over 36 years, since the beginning of Scripture verse by verse, I have never watered down one single solitary verse. I know that. You can know that because you can go back and listen to my very first series. It's archived for you along with three others at thebibleversebyverse.com. Genesis to Revelation, the whole counsel of God. If you'd like to be a part of this ministry, pray for me and pray for God's word. That makes you a part of this ministry. 
very valuable part. Also, when you take a break from studying with me, go to the front page at thebibleversebyverse.com. Click the donate button and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. That also makes you a part of this ministry. Until next time, so long.